very useful. So I'm going to ask one more question of Daisy, and then we're going to open it up. So start thinking about your questions uh, while I ask Daisy. So Daisy, the question I have, and this is as an old person who doesn't understand social media and all the other things that are going on that my kids kind of confuse me when they do. So one of the interesting ideas that you're running with here is by creating a song, by getting people to think about oceans through music, it strikes me that in a digital world where there's so much information, there's such rampant competition for mind share, if you will, and there's so many different uh, ways that people take, take information in, how do you distinguish a message, or how do you think about whether or not this song will get lost among all the other things that are out there, all the good ideas? I mean, any thoughts on how you make sure that you really can capture people's attention and keep it over the long haul, since we need attention on oceans to really be a long haul uh, endeavor? Exactly. Um, from, I think a lot about we are the oceans, it says it in the we are. And the we are for millennials and Generation Z, we are the most connected generation in history. We use these platforms that we can share information, but so much information that we are probably the most informed generation um, because of these platforms. And yes, there's a lot of noise, but it's like you touched upon earlier with the civil rights movement. It was you know, a young man who was able to mobilize people. And that's really what we're doing now in the ocean space is mobilizing a community. We like to call ourselves a collective of people, of people from different spaces. So innovators, musicians, uh, tech entrepreneurs, other philanthropists to bring them into this ocean space. And I think that with those different uh, mindsets and people from different audiences, our message about the oceans won't drown out as long as we open it up to different audiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And with the music, it's you know bringing those musicians to the space and saying, what can you bring to this topic? How can you open this song to your audiences? And that's why on um, YouTube, for example, we're asking YouTube influencers to do their version of the Ocean song so it appeals specifically to their audiences. Mm -hmm. We're not taking one song and making it you know, generalized for everyone. It's really everyone is doing their bit and doing their version of the song. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I, it's, go ahead. I'm just going to add to that. Yeah. So when, when I met Daisy last year um, and saw her plan and her vision, I think the really attractive thing was she's kind of, you know, she's going into the white space that nobody's thinking about mm -hmm. and really thinking differently about this. Mm -hmm. you know, even if you look at the We Are The Oceans branding, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a typical <coughs> oceans organization. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really standing out and trying to do things differently, mm -hmm. which I think you have to do because if everybody's using the same tools and the same social channels, mm -hmm. like you said, then it just it becomes noise. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you know, using influencers is a, is a really a important um, Thing to do rather than going to the the same celebrities you know right. who are hard to reach right. it's get people who are up and coming um because one day they'll have a lot of followers and obviously then you can leverage from that mm -hmm. so i think so when I, when I met daisy last year i was really inspired by her plan mm -hmm. um which is why i got involved in we are the oceans as well but um i, I think that's what we have to do is stand out and be different and get, yeah. get that's how your voice is heard yeah. I mean, they really are fundamentally different ways of learning, of communicating, of sharing information. And this is a prime example, anything related to communication and uh, technology, where you guys are just going to have to lead. I mean, I might be smart on some things, but I'm just never going to be as, as comfortable or as facile in understanding all these technological tools, because I didn't grow up with them the way that you guys did. Mm -hmm. So I think playing in those white spaces and continuing to push is one of the ways that you absolutely can take the leadership mantle and keep running. And folks like, like Mike and I will follow, but you guys really do need to, to frame it and put it out there. And I think as well, in terms of the private sector, it's that probably most of us in this room right now, if we had an option between a sustainable product or a normal product, we would probably opt for that sustainable product. And that's why it's so important for corporations to start um, producing things sustainably. And that's from the private sector that can, can invest in those technologies that can make products sustainable so it becomes the norm in our supply chain sustainability. And that's what we need to strive to work towards everyone together. Yeah. You know, we will buy those things if they're ready available, yeah. but they need to be, you know, that investment needs to happen to, yeah. in the supply chain. Yeah. Yeah. And you're definitely seeing it. I mean, the Unilevers of the world, the yeah. Procter & Gamble's, the Coca-Colas, mm -hmm. you go down the list, uh, they really have shifted the way they're thinking about a lot of these things. Um, all right, let, let me...